Welcome to another episode of This Is My Architecture. Today we're coming to you from Singapore. And today I'm joined by Abhishek from Norix. G'day Abhishek. Thanks for inviting me to This Is My Architecture. You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about what Norix does. So Norix is a technology company. We build next generation performance uh, driven platform for digital marketing people. So the idea is that any professional or digital marketing guy can run a campaign on different channels without understanding the complication of digital marketing industry and is still able to achieve their ROI, which, which is they are looking at. What are some of those channels? Yeah, so the channels can be uh, Facebook, uh, it can be display, websites, uh, search, uh, video, native. So any channel uh, which is available in digital marketing, as long as it's a digital, it's on internet, yeah, those channels we are looking at. Lots of different sources and we've also got lots of different consumers that are uh, coming in for your services, right? Tell us a little bit about some of the numbers that you guys are pushing. Yeah, so uh, we used to do around 100 million requests hitting our, uh, our servers every month. And in the last six months, we managed to move it to 1 billion requests per day. Wow, that is a lot. So, you know, you've been running this service for a little while. Tell us about your old architecture. We used to have Amazon EC2, uh, which we used to use it for all our application layer. And then we used to have S3 and CloudFront to service the content to the users. Uh, and then on the EC2, we used to, uh, we had uh, Python running Python script, cron jobs to process the data and making the data available to our users. So that, that was the architecture we earlier used to have. And what were some of the problems that you faced with it? Yeah, so uh, as you know that when the traffic grows like 10 times or 100 times, first major problem is the processing. You need to process that amount of data and you still need to process very fast. So that is where the processing speed is a big challenge. The second was the cost itself. You cannot keep adding more and more servers as because the traffic is growing and then the cost will just kill you. And the third is the administrative challenges because you cannot hire a lot of engineers to ma manage those servers. Yeah. So these are the three key issues we, we had with the architect. So now you have a brand new architecture. So share it with us. Yeah, so now uh, wh what we have done is we, we moved from the, uh, the, the core uh, uh, Amazon services like EC2 and S3 and CloudFront to some of the new features that was launched in last one or two years. So let's start with something like this. I just want to walk you through the architecture. So this is, like, let's say, a user, right, who is coming from any location in the world. He's coming from Singapore, US, uh, India, Australia, anywhere. It doesn't matter as long as he's on internet. He, the minute he logs in uh, or go to any website in the world, there is a request uh, that there is a JavaScript tag which send a request to our first to our Route 53 DNS resolution service. So what it does is try to identify the request is coming from what location and then route the uh, request to the respective uh, data data center. So you're using the geographic proximity routing. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, using ge geographic proximity routing here. So if it is from US, it will direct to US server or APAC or Europe. I mean, whichever is the nearest data center. Then the request, we move it to the Kinesis. And the reason of using Kinesis is we don't want the data loss to happen. So uh, the Kinesis ensures that almost 99.9 .9 times the data is there in the queue. Yeah. So, it, uh, so we push everything to the queue itself and the data stays there based on your requirement. You can keep it for 24 hours or one, well, it's your own based on requirement. So for our case, we are using it for one day. We are keeping the record there so that we can process it. From the Kinesis, uh, we move the data. We now, instead of, earlier we used to have uh, EC2 to process all the data. Now we replace it by Lambda, which is you don't need to maintain a server. You just throw the request to the Lambda, it will process and then this job is done. So there is a huge reduction in cost here as well as uh, processing because you don't need to bother about how much time you need to run the service, right? So Lambda will process the minute, as long as you are having a five minute, uh, Lambda has a five minute uh, restriction. So as long as you, you are able to process within five minutes, that's fine. And once that is done, you push the data back to the S3 and the DynamoDB. So you reduced a lot of the complexity around managing servers, uh, replaced it with serverless. And now we've got a pretty big data layer here. So walk us through what you're doing with Dynamo and S3. Yeah, <clears throat> so uh, when the Lambda process data, there are two aspects which a uh, user, when he logs into the dashboard, he's looking at. One is the uh, impression and spend, which is key metric, which they want to see up the minute they launch a campaign. So those data is sitting in DynamoDB, so XPO calls uh, those requests and able to deliver those in real time, almost within seconds, the minute the campaign launch, within one minute, they will start seeing the data on the dashboard. And we are talking about billions of requests being processed and 
deliver to the user. This is all for your millisecond response time, which is really important for your users. Um, and what about S3? S3, we generally store all the key metric because it's just like logging all the information that is coming from uh, Kinesis stream to S3 through Lambda function. So what S3 does is it push the data to the next layer for further processing. So all the data stores in S3 and we keep, uh, and then we move it to the next layer, which is the Spark streaming service. So you've uh, really you know, disconnected your compute from your uh, data layer. Uh, now let's walk through some of these other uh, database services that you're using as well. Yeah, so uh, so once the data uh, goes to S3, what we have is we are using Amazon EMS service for Spark streaming. So what it does, it pulls the data from S3, bring the data to the streaming, and then start processing those data and push it to the MongoDB so that we can store the process information. So this is the real process, like you have impressions, you have clicks, engagement, uh, you have spent, uh, uh, all sorts of key metric which a, which a person is looking at. So all those data goes to the Mongol layer. Right. And then from there what happens is, again this data volume is huge. It's not like we are talking about, uh, we are talking about giga, terabytes of data in, in a day. So I cannot load this data directly to XPU. Right. It will slow down the whole application. Mm. So what we have, we have built this Elastic Cache, which is again Amazon service. And the, this service, when make a query, make a query to this Elastic Cache, and send a response back to this. Right. So this is not hitting Mongo directly. It's right. still going through this elastic cache layer. So you've got two layers of you know, sub-millisecond response time uh, going on here. Fantastic. So uh, obviously using a lot more services, uh, again, the serverless component is fantastic. You know, apart from the, the latency and the scale um, benefits that you've been able to have, what other benefits have you seen? Yeah, so one of the major benefit we had is reduction in cost. Uh, we are managed, we managed to reduce the cost by 30 percent, even though wow. e yeah, even the traffic is growing like 10x every month. So you're growing more users but spending less money yeah. with AWS. Yeah, relatively less money is being spent. So that is one of the key thing we have achieved, and the speed. Uh, yeah, definitely. I don't think in, we could have achieved this kind of speed of bringing the data in real time, unless we move to this kind of architecture. It was simply uh, uh, impossible. Great. So what's next? Yeah, so next is now we have, as we, uh, as our system is improving and the traffic is growing, like, so what we, are, what we are seeing is there is a big bottleneck in storing the data and reading it back from Mongo, because even if the elastic cache is there, you still need to load first time the data from Mongo. So there is an IO operation going on, which is slowing down the whole thing. So what we are looking at is to move from Mongo to Amazon RDS and try to explore how we can solve this problem. Fantastic. So again, taking that undifferentiated heavy lifting away and making it obviously a lot more easier to manage uh, when you've got all these connected pieces. That's fantastic. Abhishek, thanks for coming in today and sharing your architecture with us. And thank you for watching This Is My Architecture.